Hiya, 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 hiya. Hi folks. Uh, today I'd like to look at a problem I've been asked by a few students. It deals with contact forces between blocks. So here's the problem here. We have uh, three blocks, A, B, and C, with masses 1, 4, and 3 kilograms. I'm applying a force to push these blocks along the surface, and the force is 60 newtons. I uh, have two questions. Uh, first question you have is find the acceleration of the system. So all three blocks are going to accelerate at the same rate. And the second question, uh, which students often have more difficulty with, is find the contact forces between the blocks. So there's a force here between block A and B, and there's also a contact force between uh, blocks B and C. So how do we set up the equations to solve for the contact forces in addition to the acceleration? Okay, let's have a look at how we go about to solve this problem. Acceleration of the system. Uh, the easiest thing to do is to group them together into one big chunk of stuff. And if we do that, and we look at all the forces acting on the system, uh, we'll be able to find the acceleration of the system. And we can do that because all the three blocks are going to have the same acceleration. Otherwise, uh, as they slide across the surface, they would either separate or kind of collapse together, but they're not going to do that. So, if we group them all into the system, we have a total mass, uh, which is simply equal to the sum of the individual blocks, MA plus MB plus MC, uh, which equals to 8 kilograms. Okay. Now, if you do a free body diagram uh, on that system, what do we have? Well, we're going to have an applied force, Fa. We're going to have a weight acting down, which is the total mass times little g. And then we also have a normal force acting up. If I take the positive x direction to be toward the right, positive y toward uh, acting up here. Again, we're only really interested in what's going on uh, in the x direction, so we're going to sum all the forces in the x direction. Those have to be equal to the total mass times the acceleration of the system. In this case, it's easy. There's only a single force, so we simply have Fa equals m total times the acceleration. Uh, just divide through by the total mass, and then you get an expression for the acceleration. So Fa divided by m total uh, equals to Fa. Let me just rewrite in terms of our original quantities here. It's going to be useful for the next section. Okay. Now, if you actually want to find a number, well, we can just substitute all our values in. We get 16 for the applied force. And we found the total mass was 8 kilograms. Uh, therefore, our acceleration for uh, the system is 2 meters per second squared. Okay. So pretty simple. You just put them all in one big chunk and look at all the forces acting on the chunk. Um, and then solve for the acceleration. Okay, so the next part now we want to look at the forces acting between the blocks. Contact forces between the blocks, we have to... Consider the forces now acting on each individual block. So let's start by drawing free body diagrams for the three blocks. Uh, for block A, again, we're going to have a weight. Call it weight A. We also have a weight for each block, weight B. Not very interesting in this problem because I'm not including friction. But let's include in the diagram nonetheless. And then there's also a normal force which opposes the weight, so therefore there's no acceleration in the vertical direction. Okay, and there's a normal force acting on block A. Okay, that one's easy. Now let's consider the forces in the horizontal direction, forces acting on block A. Well, there's definitely an applied force here. That force is pushing on block A and making it accelerate um, toward the right. Now there's also going to be a contact force okay, between blocks A and B. Now the contact force acting on A um, has to be toward the left. Right? It doesn't really make sense that there would be a contact force acting to the right on block A. 
So what should we call that one? Let's call that one um, FC1. So that is the force of block B pushing on block A. Now if you consider block B, now since we had this contact force, this was force of B on A, we have to have an equal and opposite force acting in this direction. That's Newton's third law, right? To every action there's an equal and opposite reaction, so we have to have FC1 um, pushing block B toward the right. Okay, so we've taken care of everything going on uh, between the contact forces between blocks A and B. Now let's consider, we have to add another force here, um, acting on block B. There's also a contact force between blocks C and B. So this one here I'm going to call contact force uh, FC2. Okay. So here's the free body diagram for block B. Now again, just as I included the contact force um, between A and B, I also have to, if I'm looking at the free body diagram for block C, there's also a force that's pushing block C. Now it doesn't make sense to put uh, the applied force uh, over on this side. Okay. The force that is pushing block C is actually the contact force FC2. And now there's no other forces acting on block C. Okay. There's no force toward the left. Right. There's only one force that's pushing uh, block C, and that's the contact force between the blocks B and C. Okay. So here's our free body diagrams. Now what we're going to do is we're simply going to uh, look at the sum of the forces. And to do this, I'm going to just choose a coordinate system where the positive uh, x direction is toward the right. So now if you apply Newton's second law uh, to the three blocks, it looks something like this. So we have Fa minus uh, the contact force Fc1. And that's it. There's no other forces in the x direction. Therefore, that has to be equal to ma times the acceleration of block A. Okay, we do it for the second one here. For block B, what do we have? We have positive Fc1, a contact force between block A and B, minus Fc2 has to be equal to the mass of block B times the acceleration of B. And the last one, uh, pretty simple, there's just one, that's FC2, uh, must be equal to uh, the mass of block C times the acceleration of block C. So we have uh, three equations. We really have three unknowns. Uh, the acceleration, although we solved it in the first part, but um, if we didn't know the acceleration, that would be one unknown. The contact force between A and B appears in the first two equations, and then the contact force between blocks B and C appears in equations two and three. In order to solve these, uh, one trick you can do, since these are action-reaction pairs here, you notice in one equation there's a negative sign, in the other equation there's a positive sign. Uh, the same thing we have here for the contact force between blocks B and C. It's negative for equation two, and it's positive because it's in the opposite direction for equation three. One way to simplify this is simply to add up all these three equations. If you add up all these three equations, well, you have Fa over here. Uh, the minus F1 and plus F1, or Fc1, cancel. And we have minus C2 over here, and then plus C2 over here. Uh, those cancel, so that's it. So that would be simply equal to Ma plus Mb plus Mc. And all the blocks have the same acceleration, so I just factored that out. And look, we get the same equation as uh, on the first page. So again, you could solve for the acceleration here. But we've already done that. Um, you get the same result whether you include all three blocks as one single chunk as we did on the first page, or if you do free body diagrams on each separate block and solve for the acceleration, you'll get the same answer. Okay. Now that wasn't the purpose here. Really what we wanted to do was 
solve for the contact forces. But once we have our three equations here, uh, we could solve for the three unknowns um, using any technique we want. So I've, I began by solving for the acceleration. Once I have the acceleration, I can substitute back into equation three. That'll directly give me what the contact force two is. Then if I substitute the acceleration in either equation two or equation one, I can then solve for uh, the contact force FC1. So let's go to the next page and uh, do some of the math. The um, contact forces, we know the acceleration. Uh, if we substitute our expression for the acceleration into equation three, uh, what we get is our contact force number two. So FC2 simply equal to the mass of block C. And our acceleration, remember, from the other page was the, our applied force divided by the total mass, which is MA plus MB plus MC. Okay, so here, here's our expression for the contact force, the magnitude of the contact force between blocks B and C. The other one we wanted was the contact force. And I'll go ahead and use equation one since I know everything else in this expression. I know the applied force. I know the acceleration. Um, I can just isolate, right? So what we get is the contact force FC1 simply equal to the applied force minus MA times our acceleration. Uh, you could simplify this expression a little bit more. So this is FA minus MA. And the acceleration, again, I'll just substitute our expression, was the applied force divided by the total mass. Which is MA plus MB plus MC. Oops. Okay. Now, if you put everything on a common denominator, um, you should find that the expression at the end of the day, let's put everything on the total mass, just like uh, the expression for the contact force two. We'll have everything multiplied times FA. And at the top here, we're gonna have MB plus MC. So here's our expression for uh, the contact force between blocks A and B. Okay. One thing you notice is that uh, this force, FC1, is all, is bigger than FC2. Okay. And it has to be bigger than FC2 because in order to have a positive acceleration, look at equation two here. Right. In order for acceleration or for the blocks to accelerate to the right, well, we needed to have a force FC1 that is bigger than FC2. Okay. That's the only way you're going to have an acceleration here for equation two that is toward the right. Okay. If you go ahead now and substitute uh, some numerical values, what we're going to find is FC2 is uh, block here is three uh, over eight. That was the total mass and times 16. Okay, so that becomes two. We're left with six newtons for the contact force between blocks uh, B and C. And the first one, FC1, again, just substitute the numbers here. What do we get? We get four uh, plus three over eight and times 16 newtons. Simplify that a little bit. What do we get? Seven, seven times two. 14 newtons. Okay. So there you have it, folks. Here are the contact forces acting on the blocks. And we also had that the acceleration of the three blocks was two meters per second squared. So here was our expression for the contact force between uh, block A and block B. And here was our expression for a contact force between blocks B and block C. So just by looking at them, you notice there's an extra term here for FC1, right? There's extra term, or there's an extra mass in the numerator that doesn't appear 
in the numerator for the contact force Fc2, right? So if you put any number for the mass of block B, uh, Fc1 is automatically bigger than Fc2. Okay, so if you take that ratio, for example, Fc1 divided by Fc2, uh, what we're going to get, all these terms are the same. Right? So what you simply get is Mb plus Mc divided by Mc, which I can simplify a little bit. Okay, therefore you see that you're always adding a number here, right? If you give me any value of a block or any mass for the block B, um, the force Fc1 is automatically going to be bigger than Fc2 because this ratio between the forces is going to be bigger than 1, okay? Only in the limit, right? If block Mb has zero mass or doesn't exist, it's very, very small on that limit. The forces are approximately equal to each other. Okay, but if you put any other number in there, you're going to see that uh, the contact force Fc1 is going to be greater than the contact force between the two final blocks here. Okay, anyway, I just wanted to point that out. Um, again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to, to send me an email or write something in the comments.